This is it. Uh, let's do this. On this ride, I left Northampton, rode into the woodlands, picked up the group at the Alden Village Center, we headed out on Research Forest, Fish Creek, all the way to Capitol Hill, into Honia. We stopped filming once we got to Montgomery, then we headed out into the forest, 1097 Mount Pleasant Road, up 149, to Bethel, we came back down, we took Johnson Road into Dacus, then Mount Moriah, we stopped in Dobbins at the uh, second taco corner, then we headed back on 1486, Jackson Road, 149 past Karen, into Magnolia, and 1488 brought us back to the woodlands. It was a uh, a very spirited ride, great workout. We picked up some riders along the way, but it was a reasonable turnout. I think you would like the clips we put together for you. Well, good luck tomorrow, Mo. Yeah, Have fun out there. My main thing is to stay safe. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. Maurizio is taking part in the Texas State Championship on the Sunday yeah, after this round. I mean, a lot of people... So he's only going to do about probably 45 minutes with us and sort of turn around once we get near Taco Corner. Uh, Mo ended up we, we on the podium. We had more people last week with the fog than this week. <laughs> at the Texas State Championship. He took third place. And that's a very brutal course. They covered about 3,200 feet in 65 miles by a little over a thousand meters. So you're going up and down. There's nowhere to hide in that course. It's in the Texas Hill Country near the area called Killeen, which is where they hold that. Place. Hey, Peter. Morning. They both did a great job. That's what he said, it's all about being safe. It's, you know, you're not getting paid to dabble in these amateur races. And so he doesn't take risks. It was very, very hot today <laughs> on this ride. The mugginess returned to our area. So we, we had two major stops on this route, which were definitely well deserved. So Mike Barreras is on the right here. He and Mike Bradbury behind there. Mike, morning, Mike Barreras in the front. Good morning, sir. He said he Come got on. something for me. He, he's returning the tube that I gave him when he had a flat. Uh, what well, you know, he bought a replacement tube. But the thing is, is I'm holding the camera. He hands me the tube. It's in a box. He's wrapped plastic around it. I hadn't planned on carrying that thing. And you'll hear Mike Bradbury make a joke about it. I end up sticking it, sticking it in my the top of my jersey, near my neck until I got the the light, and then I put it under my the going, rear man? of my bib shorts. <laughs> Oh, two. Near my <laughs> kidney area. I don't put anything on That's my great. spine. It's you know? something else to carry. I think that that that's 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 yeah, he hands me a tube. I'm like, I that's, that's all I need. Problem. It's something else to carry. That's brown envelope. Hey, Continental Race. Thanks, Mike. 80 millimeter. That's exactly what you gave me. All right. That was back a couple months ago, remember? Yeah. So I'm holding the, the, the package in my right one. hand, and I have I the camera that. in my left hand. So we're riding up to the bunch. Yeah, so I slow that. down to get the package from. You can see the wrapper on the right by my 
head unit. I'm holding my right hand and resting on the bars. I'm trying to decide what to do with it. So I'm kind of hoping, I said, well, maybe we'll catch a light and I'll get a chance to put it away. I don't want to put it in my pockets because they're already loaded. So I figure I could stick it, you know, somewhere over there on this corner here. I'm going to decide to just put it at the top of my jersey behind my helmet. You right this morning? Yeah. You just didn't need, you didn't need that inner tube right now. Okay, no exactly. <laughs> 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 you didn't need that inner tube right now, you're right. So right here, I'm gonna stick it in my the top of my jersey behind my neck, on my neck, right there. Right there. That's where I put it. Right there. I didn't know the camera got that. Okay. So that's cool. I just put that up temporarily because you don't want to put stuff on your spine that doesn't breathe. It's one thing to put ice in stockings oh, cool. and stick them there like right a pro suit, but yeah, that yeah, box had a plastic yeah. wrapping around. That's good. I'll put it up later. But uh, the thing is, is that uh, you don't want to put anything on your neck or your spine area that doesn't breathe because you, you can overheat. So I put it there temporarily. I figure once I get to a stopping point, I will take it out. And so right up here at the light, I go ahead and remove it and put it on the back, the back side of my bib right near my kidney Ooh. area on the side not on my spine like the sewer line broke and it just disappeared yeah this area is a smell it's been there all week i don't know what happened here almost like the sewer backed up or something this is egypt lane so i'm going to use this opportunity to put it up and then mike bradbury on the right here will help me so oh, i'm just going to pull this because I'm trying to get it under my bib. Yeah, rear. my brother, we're live. I, I got to put camera. up this inner tube. Mike Barrera just gave me my inner tube back yeah. from the last time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a new inner tube. But I wasn't, uh, I wasn't planning on carrying this thing. <laughs> 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 he just gave, yeah, he just handed it to me. So I, I need, even wrapped it. I'm going to put it under my bib. It's actually better up there, man. Well, I don't like it up there because uh, that's, I get hot. That's an area I want to have some air. Yeah, it's got plastic on the so box the and I, I don't want to put that on my spine. Yeah, yeah man, been busy. Yeah. <laughs> so I put I it saw under my bib on the right side, right. behind oh, my right yeah. pocket, yeah. under my right yeah. pocket, so to speak. Yeah, and the one and before that, I think Thursday you rode, right? <laughs> yes, yes, we did with Mike. Yeah, someone released a video of where you were in the front with your TT bike. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a little bit of that. But I've just been busy, man. Yeah, well, it happens. So that's so Peter on the left. Oh, that's doing good, Paul. There's Dutch right. out on the right here. Going back, uh, going back and home to San Diego for the and, blue uh, Asa skit. Up leaving there. next Monday, a week like from Monday. A few okay. Rides. Is uh, Rosalie coming with you? Yeah, my son's getting married. Oh, okay. And then, uh, you know. So uh, Mo uh, is going to stay mom, in the back pretty much all while. the ride, just kind of sit in. Okay. Just to stay in. Yeah, bingo tournament. He's got uh, that. Uh, she loves so bingo. The, the race was. Uh, oh, she's getting. About. You know, it was like a metric century really in the hills. It was just hilly. They did, they did like 62 miles in two hours and 55 minutes. They averaged almost 23 miles an hour. I think a little over 23 miles an hour. They averaged 37 no, K or something, 96 okay. point something K. Just fast. I mean, for that terrain, I mean, it's up and down. She's mentally, she's, I swear, she's sharper now mentally. Good performance. Good performance. Than she ever was. I mean, she is. She's astonishing me. I don't know what it. What's so we check for traffic here at this mentally. corner. She's saying vocabulary and articulating roll her um, sentences I believe better than she I'm ever up has. Front, okay. I yeah, think, no, I'm behind though, Paul. She's I'm actually behind Paul. Behind the camera right uh, now. Declining and we 
Once, Once we get on fish quick, I'm gonna roll to the front. So make sure I'm yeah. in the clip so I can synchronize these clips. Day starts out overcast, but the sun comes out later. That's a lot of days start like this. The temperatures are much nicer this week. Hey, man. How are you doing? After this ride, the temperatures sharp. drop. We got some rain. I can't ride like you're gonna be, look like you. <laughs> That's the spirit. Full on <laughs> Mike Bradbury talking about his kids all in the of the world. So, Raphael. The open road. Fish Creek. Full of fat. With this ride, we're going straight. We're not using Honey Egypt. We end up uh, at a very civilized pace. I think we're going to stay two abreast for quite some time until the pace really gets hot. Even a little bit I'll come. Up front. Yeah, yeah. 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 Taco. Yeah, I've got those uh, radio pockets on the Rafa shorts. And so when we stopped the taco, I took the tube out of the box and put up in those radio pockets on the the bottom of the strap. Right now it's under my jersey. You can't see it. It's uh, right above my kidney. Uh -huh. The exact tube that I gave him. As I was telling him, I said, it's nice that you did. Is everybody around here? Yeah. Just so these guys don't. So, that's another thing. That's what we're just talking about. Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that sets you apart. So you're on the ride and somebody uh, loans your tube to get you out of the scrape. When you can return the person's tube. Because that wasn't their plan. You know, that was nice that he did that. When I give somebody a tube, I don't care if I get it back or not, but I think it's a nice gift. Just added so Peter, uh, sure Doug on the right requested that we add Peter. Peter on the left had not been in the chat group. Our chat group 
is a group. Group me is an app where you can put groups together, and it allows people yeah. to know where the ride's going, yeah, that's that's you put a route there, the time, the, the start times, everything, all yeah, the details. Okay. We primarily just, we don't keep the board busy, we focus mostly on posting rides, whether it's during the week, you know, I only post the weekend rides on Saturday, but other riders will post rides that are happening during the week and so forth, so it's a good way to create groups. So what we're talking about is we're all busy, we're both busy with work, other things, family obligations and so forth. And he said, oh, I'm sleeping a lot. So I told him, well, that's actually good. Uh, sleep is good because if, you, if you're too stressed and your mind is moving, you can't sleep, less, that wears you out even more. So when you can sleep, that's good you recover from all the stresses of life. They stayed with us a few days and then they got on the road. So they just got there yesterday. Does she have a job there already? Yeah, she, her job is a remote, so she oh. moves with it. It's just the husband got a promotion there. That's what they're moving. Good change. Yeah, good change. See some lights it's coming. Emotional. It's uh, the days are changing. We're not going to be messing around with the time anymore. The time stays in daylight savings time. You know, we used to move it back an hour and then it'll get dark at 5 30 in the evening. Not anymore. point I'm thinking about okay how long are we going to keep this up to abreast <laughs> in a little while I'm going to tell Paul I'm getting in the line you know because it's like I, Peter starts to move up I think I'm going to get behind Doug just is thinning at the front I think Laura and whoever is pulling they're going to pull off I think Mo's going to pull off I think Mo is actually at the front here if I, do, if I remember correctly Yeah, Moe's at the front. That's Mike B back there on his TT bars. Brought the Cervelo P5 out to them. Darren at the front, in double pace line at this point. We're going to pull off in a little bit. I think Laura will take over. I'm not sure who's next to her. the skinny. Even the we came back, we dropped a lot of guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We dropped the right people in our room. It's a know-it-all. Yeah. His buddy took pulled off, and so he's going to drift to the back. And I think, yeah, Darren pulls up also. Yeah, yeah. Only reason to ever remove the tire like he did uh -huh. is if you don't have a tire on. Yeah. And you do that. But why air up the deflated tube before you take it out of the tire? Just take it out of the tire. Yeah. I was yeah. like, what the hell is he doing? Waste of time. No, I saw that. <laughs> so we're, we're talking about a, a guy who changed the flat on a ride that we did on Sunday the week before and there was a master class on how not to change a flat <laughs> uh, you know he just wasted a lot of time doing unnecessary things and he's one of those personalities that believes he's doing it right and will take no input from others so I just stood and watched it was painful to watch. <laughs> you know, so after a while, once I had enough, I thought, Paul, let's start rolling. 
but the group was waiting for the flat to be repaired. And so we rolled up further up to where the bigger part of the group had stopped. But we stopped with the guy who had the flat to assist him. And this other person insisted on taking over and just found the slowest way to repair it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like taking the longest way to the store. Get up the two and feel great. <laughs> and then sometimes dragging a few hours later, Ooh. but at least I got that sniffing. Yeah, so I'm fighting. Oh, yeah. We're talking about, you know, a certain time to fall asleep. I'm not really ready to go to bed every time. I, just, I sleep. I slept for one hour. You know, but then sometimes, like, the night before this ride, I got up at 1 a.m. You know, what do you do at 1 a.m.? Yeah, it looks like I just work and sleep, man. That's all I do. Well, you're working a lot of hours, I feel it. Like I got up at one and then couldn't go back to sleep till four, and then I had to get up at five for this ride. <laughs> it was a weird, weird night. That's how I got something for him. I'll bring it on a ride. And sometimes you're excited about a ride and then you just can't sleep. You know, and you're excited about a ride the next day. Your pocket is open. I hope you don't have anything in it. Yeah, Doug has. Security, the security the pocket is open. Yeah, nothing in there. Paul, uh, Paul had left his open uh, one time. I forgot my key. <laughs> 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 yeah. Paul left it open one time and he almost panicked, but his key fob didn't fall out. I, I yeah, know we're talking man. about it here. Scared the heck out of me. I remember. Because, <laughs> you know, we do 100 miles. I mean, where are you going to begin to look for a key fob on a 100 mile route? <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't fall. Oh, it's just what the father is. I just forgot. Yeah, you want to zip those up. I think somewhere around here I'm going to probably get on Doug's wheel and roll off. Because this word continues to go up. I mean, you can see it visually. It's a slight drag. About you know, one or two percent is going to dip down and that really sure it's going to kick up. Yeah. 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 We had some couple full mornings so this yeah. week. We're doing about 20 miles an hour. It's pretty civil at this point. Everybody's taking their cuts. Road goes up here, so we press on the pedals. You can see me actively pulling up. I'm using the muscles in the back of my legs. Kenny pulls off. I believe Laura's going to pull off. See how Kenny peels off to the left? And you see how Laura peeled off to the right? That's how you get out of when, when you're done pulling in the double pace line. You kind of peel off like the layers of a banana. This is bridge lake shore, it's about two percent, so two and a half. So. I'll let Paul and I take those wheel paces going 
faster and faster, so we're gonna go single file here. Soft pedal, stop pedaling, just kind of rolling. It's a bit warm, I think I'm unzipping a bit. Ooh, it kicks up some more here. soft pedal when they slow down because a flat road you will never need a brake but because we're descending a bit you either drift to the left or you tap your brakes a little bit just you have to do everything smoothly The rolling terrain here. We're not going super fast at this point, you know. Plus, he's planning on taking it easy to stay fresh for tomorrow's Texas State Championship. This is the prelude to the overpass. I think it gets to near 3%. This is a nice length. Approaching the overpass, you have to keep your rhythm. So I'm going through the gears because the road's kind of flat here. It dips slightly downhill. I think Mo wants to do a little bit of work. So he's moving up. He wants to keep his rhythm. I know he's there, I see Mo. These guys are going and I'm right on Doug's wheel. Mo's on my wheel and we're going up. I can see Mo as I climb here. And the reason Mo is doing this here is his race tomorrow is up and down. And I think he just wanted to kind of remind his body that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow. Very specific. The specificity of your training is important. So that was the one effort I saw him do other than the pulling he was doing earlier. And that was pretty much it. The rest of the time he just kind of sat in. Sat at the back. Took it easy. But he did great. I mean, you know, the Texas State Championship, that course is brutal. You're doing 3,000 feet in 
uh, let's say 100 kilometers, you know, 1,000 meters and 100 kilometers around our area, it takes us, we've got to do almost probably uh, 140K, 140 kilometers to do that, that much climbing. It's just spread out. So that's a tough, tight, up and down course in Miyakili. I think there was an area out there used to be called Fort Hood. I think they changed the name. It's a it's a military place. That's in the hill country. Capitol Hill Road. We have to stop. A lot of cars coming. Tight together. So we stop. So, uh, John in front of me, a.k.a. Clement Chepoussant, had been pulling back on Fish Creek. So in a little bit, he's going to soft pedal so that I can get behind Duck. Because on position, I was behind Duck on the road. But when we turn, kind of got shuffled a little bit. So right there, he's going to just soft pedal so I can get back where I was. This is Capitol Hill Road. It kicks up a little bit, it's short, and then we're gonna go down here. There's a lot of cracks and crevices, uneven patches of asphalt. <laughs> Stay to the right to catch more wind so I don't overshoot Doug. We'll start to kick up here. It's going to be a slight drag for the next kilometer or so. Turn back there, I was in a moderate gear. I had taken a wide turn, I did not need to get up. 
I didn't have any gaps to close. I'm sitting on Doug's room the entire time. Now we're on 20, 20 miles an hour. 20, 21. going to pull until we get across the intersection the, there's a four way intersection in the distance there once we cross that you can pull off Section coming up is where Doug is going to relinquish his uh, turn at the front. the same. Try to keep the watts reasonable. Yes. Four hundred watts. Stay within yourself. You're not tired after the climb. You just gotta keep right. Just 
keeping the rhythm, just tapping out the rhythm. We're gonna be turning right to South Pine Boulevard. I look in my mirror, it's clear. It looked like it rained here a little bit. We had scattered showers in here. We notice they have striped South Pine and they striped uh, Mill Route. Got a yellow line of mill route. I'm gonna double here because I don't want people passing this curve. Let people know there's car after some people cut the corner. Just looking for the smoothest path <laughs> and through all the cracks and crevices, the patina of this road. So we we'll fall up. Paul took a longer pull. I edited it for time here. Content remained the same. He sat up there for a while and turned here on Mill Route. And he pulled for a while before he flipped the camera around to get the group. It's a good shot here. I like this shot. Because this shot, the group is not aware he's filming behind. I like that. I use that a lot when I carry the camera. So you just hold it in your right hand. The, the lens is actually on the right when you flip it behind. So the lens gets what you see on the side. It doesn't just get you. This is mill route is up and down. So we're doing almost 17, 18 miles an hour because of the terrain. 20 here. I think he stayed up there a bit long. I was like, you need to get off the front. <laughs> it's a long day. So he was pointing at the the wash off from the other road. It always the dirt washes onto the pavement when it rains. There's Laura. I think somewhere in a little bit he's gonna pull off somewhere around here. He'll pull off to the left right there. And Laura goes through. And Michael. Yeah, he was up there for quite a while. I had to edit it because most of it was just rude. See Doug's wheel, he's got the like some kind of tape or stuff on it. It looks cool. It's like uh, very visible as it spins. I think it's some kind of tape. The 
pace is fairly reasonable through here. Um, this yellow line on Mill Rock is a new thing. <laughs> we, we're not used to having lines on here. But it's nice. Changes the character a bit. Somebody forcing the pace up there, so we increase the effort. I really enjoyed the feel of the tubulars on this ride to the point where if I do get another pair of wheels when I'm able to, I'm definitely leaning towards another set of tubulars. They just they ride so well. Everybody's around me hitting rocks and having punctures. No issues with that. No pinch flats. I mean, I do read the road fairly well, still. I carry stands, no seal. I do have sealant in the rear because they got a puncture a long time ago. But other than that, they've been bomb proof. The Continental Competition tubulars. Very tight to put on the rim, but they, they work. They use uh, butyl tubes, so I don't have to inflate them every ride. We turn onto the main lane and there's nothing coming. And then I accelerate because there's a gap in front of Chef Poussin. I don't know what he was doing. I used just a high cadence rim. I didn't plan on chasing anybody on this. This road it has a weird rhythm when you turn onto it. It's a drag. And somebody raised the pace. We're doing about 22 miles an hour thereabouts. It's a slight grade the entire way and it kicks up before it levels off. So I don't like to be chasing on, on this road. I want to be in the action if I'm going to ride with the group. So when we turn, Shemple saw a lot of gap to open. I just went around him. So I wasn't sure what he was doing. My goal this ride was to get the distance in. Because two weeks ago, I took off the weekend and well into the latter part of the following week so I'm building back up and I just wanted to finish the entire ride strongly you always want to have goals you know and that you know, I took a lot of pulls on this ride Somebody did something back there to make that driver blow that horn like that. I'm at the front, so I don't know what happened right there, but somebody had to have done something. Somebody may have gotten on the road too early. That guy's in a cyclist too. This new pavement is beautiful on this section of 2854. Further south, the opposite direction, 
They've got it all torn up. They're still working on it. It's nice and clean, man. They, they, they must have swept it. Last week it was dirty. A little small, little rocks all over. They cleaned it in both directions. I don't know, I guess it's the way my brain works. When I'm driving my car, whether it's a motorcycle or whatever, if somebody's doing something weird, the last thing I want to do is pass them. <laughs> I want to watch and see what is this person doing. Do I want them behind me or do I even want to try to pass before they do something? You know, that's not the time to be close. If somebody's doing something erratic, you don't want to be anywhere near them. Yeah, Mike Barrera went by by uh, here. That's the first time I saw him come near the front. So he goes off the front here. We just keep riding. I mean, we're going downhill. There's a light in the distance. I'm not sure who's pulling at this point. I see Peter up there. He's in front of Peter. Somebody's in front. This is a 105. We're in Montgomery, Texas. The downtown is about probably three kilometers to the left, west of this intersection. This is uh, Highway 105, which runs on the east side towards Conroe and points beyond. And west, you can take it and get to College Station. Not on the same road, you have to connect. Hey, Elgin, can we stop in here or are we going to go? We're going to go up to Taco uh, Are we stopping yeah. at Taco Bell? Yeah, we're going to take it. Okay. I, I didn't answer there because uh, I take the time every week to post a, a put a route and John and a few other people still want to be asking me on the route where we're going if you're not going to look at the route then just follow us <laughs> you will see where we stop you'll see where we turn you know. so we uh, the light changes and we roll through this intersection Mo and uh, Doug turn around uh, Mo's going to do the race the Texas State Championship which he took third this year in so he's turning around to go back you don't want to tire yourself out before an important event so he just came out to kind of stay loose By the time we actually get to the back of this group, I think there's a split at the front. I don't see it till we get at the top of this hill. But we're almost at Taco at that point. We end up catch riding back up to them. So what I was saying is that I take the time every week to put a route there. The description of the route says where we're going. I put the name of the stops, the stores, the points on the map. And not everybody's into the detail, but don't come ask me where we're going. If you're not going to look at the map, then just follow us. <laughs> you know, I don't have time for that. It takes an inordinate amount of time to put these routes together. I save some of them as courses and I put them on there. This is where the split occurs. So we're going around trying to bridge up. I'm behind the camera at this point, and I see the gap. And it's a lot of effort, you know, 300 something watts, almost 400 watts. So if you're not into detail, then don't come ask me on the, on the route. Just follow us. <laughs> so they ask questions, I don't I don't bother answering. I just I don't have time. <laughs> if you wanted to know, you would have clicked on the map. This is where we see the gap. We're gonna go around Kenny and then. I don't know if we do or not. I think 
I think so. I think we can. I'm not sure how the gap opened, but if you're going to let the gap open and then chase it down, I don't get that. When you see a gap, you gotta jump on it quickly if you wanna ride with those people. It just takes more energy to chase it down. Just, so maybe something something happened. Somebody let the gap. We can see the guys in the distance there. And we look at our line. It is tight here. We're doing 23, 24 miles an hour almost on this thing it settles and I think this is where I think Paul goes around Kenny and uh, John I'm really not putting out many watts yeah I guess we're descending yeah I'm just sitting 30 miles an hour so we catch up to them quickly it's a bit of a hesitation on the corner I'm just gonna roll to the front Paul wanted somebody to come around, so I just rolled around. Just keep it going, just right to the store. But our rides are not scripted. Um, I like the spontaneity. Uh, we let people do what they want to do. And then periodically we'll kind of have a hiatus where, oh, this person an eighth of a mile off or you know 200 meters off the back this person's off the back let's wait for him a little bit and we just kind of soft pedal and, and that person catches back up and then we continue because sometimes people get in a bit of a bother and throughout the ride is going to change so it really ended up we stayed together fairly well this whole ride so i don't know what you did on saturday but this is part of what we did we had fun it was a blast got some good k's in i took sunday off and just caught up on things around the house. So remember, get your K's in and keep every doctor fired. This is Taco Corner, the mean official in Montgomery County, Texas. I've never had that taco. I can't eat that stuff when I'm on the bike. But uh, this is where we stop. They, they treat us right here. They, they welcome us. Guys, happy to see us when we show up because we buy a lot of stuff. <laughs> Cyclists are not broke people. <laughs>